verse 8 through 11. And then we'll go to Isaiah 54, 17. If you would, let's stand for the reading of the word. Psalm chapter 32, verse 8 through 11. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule, which hath no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit and a bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall, shall compass about him, him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Isaiah 54 and 17. We all know this verse very well. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in the judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, one more time, God, for such an honor, God, and such a privilege it is, God, to stand behind this pulpit, God, and to bring the word to these wonderful people. God, and I just ask you, God, for the next few moments, God, that you'll hide me behind the cross, God, and Lord, that they'll see nothing, God, and hear nothing but what thus saith the Lord. God, and when all is said and done, all the glory, God, all the praise and the honor, God, will go back to you, because you are the one that's worthy. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, and everybody said... Hey Amen. You might be seated. So tonight I want to talk to you for a few moments on get your shout back. Get your shout back. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired. Sick and tired of seeing the Christians with their heads down like this, walking around. I'm talking about from across the world. Not just here at Cross Park. I'm talking about any man or woman that claims to be of God. I get so tired of seeing them all the time walking around like this. They're just, they look like they've been in a boxing ring with Muhammad Ali and they just look wore out. They look like they can't do nothing. The devil's played tricks on them and told them lies and fed them garbage. And for the most part, we've taken it hook, line, and sinker. But I'm here to tell you tonight, tonight is the night that the church gets her shout back. We're going to stand again, and we're going to shout, we're going to praise God. I don't mean you have to get up here and shout and dance in front of everybody, but if the Lord gets a hold of you, and it's in the Spirit, go ahead. But we're not going to just walk around mopey anymore. We're going to leave tonight. I know that I've been excited. Ever since God gave me the message, I couldn't wait to get here to preach. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me. I can't hardly contain it. But tonight, we're getting our shout back. How many of us would like to have our shout back? Come on now. Be honest. Amen. We'd like to have the shout back. You see, the devil knows what games to play. He knows exactly what to do to get in the inside of our heads. Tonight is the night that Cross Park's going to shake the foundations with praise. We're going to give praise to our Heavenly Father. We as the church have been down far too long. We need to take our places, rise up, awaken church, and praise God again. Amen? We have to be awakened. You see, as we read in our opening text in the book of Psalms, David is talking to the children of God, and he says, You see, I will teach thee. I will instruct thee. The only way David was able to do that is he first heard God tell him, I will teach you. I will instruct you. I will guide you. And you see, when a man or a woman walks and obeys God as David did, then that man or that woman can step out and say, Here, let me help you. I'm going to show you the right way. But if they've not been in the river, if they've not been with God and they haven't heard from God, I don't want to hear nothing they got to say. I only want to hear what thus saith the Lord. You see, David walked with God and he was a God pleaser. David wasn't out to please man, but he said, I'm going to please God. You see, he tells them, I will instruct thee. I'm going to teach, ye, teach you in the way that you should go. Those words right here mean pretty much the same. Instruct means to teach, to inform the mind to educate, to impart knowledge to the one who, has, who was destitute of it. The word teach means to instruct, to inform, to communicate to another the knowledge of which he was before ignorant. All of us can be instructed. All of us could be taught to do more for the kingdom of God and to do it the way we should. But you see right here many times, this is where we get ourselves into trouble. We think, oh, I can do it by myself. 
I've been serving God for 30 years. What's that pastor going to tell me that I don't already know? Just because he prayed, I pray too. What makes him better than me? It's not that he's better than you. He's the shepherd of the church. He's our pastor. Listen to him. You see, we get in trouble. We think we can do it by ourselves, but guess not what? We can't. I can't do it. I've got to have the Holy Ghost and fire every day. I have to pray. I have to read and say, God, lead me. God, guide me. God, instruct me. God, teach me the way that you want me to go today. How many times have we as Christians walked by a blessing or an opportunity that God had before us because we weren't listening to the Holy Ghost? I don't know about you, but I'm thankful. I'm so thankful that the Holy Ghost is here to teach me. He's here to help me to know the ways of the Lord, the ways of truth, the ways of righteousness. Where would I be if I was the one teaching myself? Sounds foolish. Let me tell you this. How smart would a child be if he taught himself, never had anybody else older than him to teach him how to do school? Just say Maggie said, I'm going to start teaching myself how to read. I'm going to teach myself how to do this. If she'd never had any other learning before, she would never know anything. Same way with us as we walk this Christian walk. If we don't allow the Holy Ghost to, to this Word to be put into our heart and to guide me and to teach me and say, no, that's not right, but this is. This is the way you should go. Are you with me tonight? If, like Dad said this morning, if you will listen, you'll amen. You will, we'll get out of here quick. You can go home and watch the Super Bowl. Just kidding. But you see, we have to have the Holy Ghost teaching us the ways of truth and of righteousness. Where would I be if I was teaching myself? I think about it. How scary would that be? If we began to think, if I was going to teach myself, thank God He's my teacher. Thank God He knows the best way. Thank God the best way and the correct way. Because I don't know. I'm out here walking blindly. That's why you have to just hold on to the Master's hand. You have to step out by faith every now and then. When you can't feel what's under you, it's all right. Go ahead and step out because His hand's there and He will catch you every time. I know there's times that we think we know better. Honey, we don't. God's the great I Am. He knows all things. Even if you don't want Him to, He still does. He's God. I thank God for God. Without God, this world would be in much worse shape than it is. I know the world's in a bad place tonight. I know it is. But just think if there was no hand of God in this world at all. If you removed all the Christians off of the planet and all you had was the drunkards and the murderers and the thieves and the liars, how much worse would it be? Remove all the, the police department. Get them out of here. How much worse would it be? I know it's times now you don't even hardly want to leave your house after dark. You remove the police officers, you won't go outside after dark or they'll take you. Could we really grasp just a small glimpse of how this world would be without God? You talk about a living hell that it would be? It would be terrible. I know that we live in a time that everybody thinks it is okay to do whatever they want. Everybody's right in their own eyes and does not care about the things of God. But just know if there was no mercy... If there was no grace from God Almighty, where would we be? God, help us tonight to really grasp a hold of what He has for us. I don't know about you, but I come prepared. I come ready, excited, and expecting God to do something. I didn't just come tonight and say, oh, well, we'll just have another service. We'll sing two or three songs. He'll get up there and preach for a few minutes. We'll have an altar call. No, I come expecting God to restore marriages. I come expecting God to, to, to dry up cancers. I come expecting God to restore marriages. Families that are broken, an individual that's hung on pornography, somebody addicted to alcohol or heroin or whatever it is, they can get deliverance tonight. Amen? They can get what they need from God. You see, there's no place I'd rather be than in the presence of God. There is no high higher than the King of Kings. There's no football game that can give me the satisfaction of Jesus Christ. And I love football. But there's no other satisfaction as good as the presence of the Lord. Take this whole world and give me Jesus. How many of you remember that old song? We've sung it before. It's an old one. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. I mean no disrespect when I say this, so please hear me. Hear my heart's cry. I don't believe we sing it as we used to. 
For the most part, I believe across the board, we don't sing any of the music that we used to the way we used to. You know, the lights can be dim. The words are on the screen for you. You can just... My pastor back home said, it's easier to sing a lie than it is to tell a lie. Because you're in the presence of God. Of course, it's a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God. The words are on the screen. All i got to do is sing, I surrender all. Sitting here singing, I surrender all. We don't mean it. Please, please hear me. You see, people used to give up everything for the kingdom of God. And I'm not saying you got to sell your house, sell your cars, all that. I'm just saying we push back at the flesh. I said we push the things that once used to be something. We lay it aside because we want more of God, because we want revival to break out, not just in Cross Park, but across the board. We want revival to break out. We want people to be saved. We want families to be saved. Amen? We want our fathers to be the fathers that God's called us to be and to lead that family. It's been too long that the moms have taken the kids day in and day out to churches and daddy's laying at the house doing whatever he wants to do. It's time for the men to stand up and say, as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. It doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't matter what they may think. I'm going to serve God. You see, when Jesus is all that you have, He's all that you need. He's more than enough to face whatever comes against me. That verse goes on to say this, that He would guide thee. That word here, guide, means to lead or to direct in a way, to order. The Bible says it like this in Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. You see, God leads that man. God leads that woman. He'll direct them. He'll order their steps if we allow Him to. We don't have to walk around all the time lost as a termite in a yo-yo. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's the truth. I've talked to people all the time, and I'm just like, well, they'll talk to me for a few minutes. I'm like, well, just what, do you, what about this? Well, I really don't know. Well, where do you go to church? Well, when I go to church, I go down to... Somebody's church on down over there on this street. We're never going to do anything for the kingdom of God if we don't come to church, if we're not ready, we're not prayed up. We have to be led by the Holy Ghost every day. I know we've heard this. Dad said it before. I've said it before. But it's worth repeating. A pastor friend of ours said one time, that somebody asked him, do you have to have the Holy Ghost to go to heaven? He said, honey, I've got to have the Holy Ghost go to the mailbox. That's what we need to get back to. Not just laying the Holy Ghost saying, hey, you Holy Ghost, stay over here in the corner. No, get up every morning and say, Holy Ghost, I come this morning. God, I pray to you right now. God, please, Lord, order my steps. God, open my eyes. Help me to see, God, the way that you'd have me to see. God, I'm tired of walking down in the mully grubs. I want to get my shout back. I want to get up excited in the morning. I want to say, thank you, Jesus, one more day. I've got breath in my lungs and I'm alive. I'm not dead. Thank God for the hot water. I took a shower this morning. That water was hot. Thank you, Jesus. If you ain't got nothing else to thank you for, thank you for the breath you're taking. Be led of the Holy Ghost every day. If you're not filled, I pray that you seek God and receive it in Jesus' name. Church, we're to be the happiest people in the world. I tell you what, I sure wish they wouldn't sing that. I wish he wouldn't preach that loud. I'm moving on. We're to be the happiest people in the world. We are washed by the blood of the Lamb. No more is the sin that was once on my life. No more the shame that once used to haunt me. No longer is it there because Jesus said, Give it to me. I'll take it. He stretched His arms out. And he took every bit of the sin and all the shame and He took it at Calvary for you and I. He bore all of our sin and shame that we might live a free life. There is freedom with being a child of God. I've had people tell me and ask me about being free. How can you say you're free? You have to go to church. You have to go to prayer meeting. You have to do this. No, you're wrong. I don't have to come to church. I'm so thankful that I'm not in China tonight where I have to hide out to have a, a gathering with brothers and sisters of like precious faith. I can just drive down the parkway, come into church with other brothers and other sisters freely. 
freely. I don't, I get to come to church. It's an honor and a privilege. I've had them tell me, oh no, I'm free. Do whatever I want. Matter of fact, the other day at work, it was spitting rain, snow, sleet, whatever, flurrying. One of the workers was out there and I was out there with them. I was freezing to death. I said, man, I'm going back inside. He said, I'll be there in just a minute, but i got to smoke my cigarette first. Now, what kind of freedom is that? You can't even go a day without being addicted to a cigarette and you have to stand outside and go... <laughs> Tell me what kind of freedom is that? That's not freedom. That is a slave to that cigarette. That's a slave to the enemy. I don't have to stand out there and freeze. I get to come back inside where it's warm. I get to come to church. I want to be here. David said it like this in Psalm 122 and 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go into the house of the Lord. What an honor it is. There is no one making me or forcing me to be here tonight. I love coming to the house of God. I love being in the presence of God with my brothers and sisters of like precious faith. It is an awesome thing. You know what happens when we come together tonight in one mind and one accord, the kingdom minded? Miracles happen. Tonight you may have cancer somewhere in your body. It doesn't matter because we serve the great physician. All you have to do is throw your hands up and we pray for you in the name of Jesus. The cancer dries up immediately. Kidneys not functioning the way they're supposed to. In Jesus' name, kidneys function. I didn't come to talk about the weather or to talk about a big buck I wish I could kill. Although that would be nice, but that ain't why I'm here. I'm here to do business with the King of Kings. And if we're here for any other reasons, then we're here for all the wrong reasons. Jesus is the only reason. There's no one like Him. We could start tonight and search the whole world over and never find one like our King. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little happy right now. I'm feeling a little good on the inside because my shouter ain't broke, amen? God's restored. The shout is available. It's coming up. My shout, my praise is coming up. I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to get back up. Come on, I wish somebody would get a hold of what I'm trying to tell you. The shout don't have to be broke. Quit listening to that lying devil. How can the Creator of all things come into the building and we not be moved? There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to worry about. It's time to get our shout back. The devil has messed with us for way too long. We must stand up and say, Oh, devil, you need to hit the road, Jack. Hit the road. Don't ever come back. I belong to Jesus. I'm a son or I'm a daughter of Jesus. And I'm going to just say, Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that you love me. There's nothing he can do about it. You say, Jesus, he runs. Like if I was, remember when Zach and Maggie were little, I'd go, boo. Oh, mommy! You say, Jesus. He said, oh, he's out of here. He can't stay. There's something about that name. Here's a few names of God. Jehovah, I am. Listen to me, I am. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. How many need somebody... How many in here did not need the Lord to provide in some kind of way? Well, honey, tonight, Jehovah Jireh's in the building. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord's my banner. Jehovah Ralph, the Lord, He is the one who heals. Jehovah Rahoy, the Lord is my shepherd. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. That's just a few of them. There's some on here that I can't even pronounce. But He's the Lord that sanctifies. He provides. He heals. He's my shepherd. He's the Lord of hosts. The Lord of armies. The Lord is there. And the Lord is my companion. The Lord is our righteousness. I am. Mm. So the next time the devil comes around telling you you're not going to make it, just start throwing the names of Jehovah at him. Just start throwing the King of Kings name. Oh, He's my banner. He's my healer. He's the will in the middle of the will. Devil, you can do whatever you want to. Take my wife, take my children, take my family, take the job, whatever you want to. But I'm going to be as old Job. I'm going to walk right out to this valley. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to praise the Lord. I ain't going to let you get me down, devil. I'm going to walk through that valley. I'm not staying in it. I'm going through it. It's just a season. You see, when he reminds you of your past, say, well, praise God. Let me tell you about your future. 
Let me tell you, loser, you can't handle it. You can't handle what the end of the book says. You're a loser and I'm a winner. I've read the end of the book. We're all winners. We're more than conquerors. Romans chapter 8, 37 through 39. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on, somebody. There's nothing, nothing or no one that can get us away from God. I'm in the Master's hand. The only way I get out of it is I step out myself. The devil can't pull me out. You can't pull me out. And you can't pull me out. I'm locked in the arms of Jesus. You see, there's times that you're going to need to quote the Word of God. So we've got to know it. If you don't know it, we need to know it. We've got to quote the Word of God to Him and He will flee. Hell knows He's no match for the child of God that has their shout and knows the Word of God. I don't mean just shouting. Woo! Anybody can do that. But I'm talking about when you're down in the mullet groves. You just lost your job. Maybe you just lost your family. Maybe all hells come against you. You can still say, God, thank you for the air in my lungs. Lord, thank you for my sane mind. Thank you I'm not in an insane asylum down there. They got me in a straight jacket. But God, I can praise you. Lord, I can thank you. You give me air to breathe. You've given me food to eat. You've given me water to drink. We need to shout for joy because God is faithful. He is always going to be there for you and I, no matter the time or day or of night. Now you call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, there's a good chance I may not hear the phone. But He's always up. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. All you got to do is say, Father, all the mirrors are here. He's like, Perko. Oh, there's sisters. There's Susan. Yes, honey, I'm here. Your Father's here. What are you saying? Go ahead. It's that simple. It's that simple. Here's you a few more verses to remember the next time the devil tries to torment you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Tell him I'm not what I used to be. Thank God. Thank God I'm not that individual. Thank God I'm not the Billy Pearson that I was 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Thank God I'm not that disgusting, filthy rag. Thank God my sins are under the blood. Thank God I'm on a new path. I'm a new creature inside of Christ. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. When's the last time somebody gave their life for you? Yet Christ gave everything. And across the board, we just kind of get partial. I know I said it last time I preached, but the last time I checked the statistics, it says that an average Christian prays less than two minutes a week. Oh, but we got the power. Woo! We ain't got no power. We can't knock the flea off a dog's back. We ain't prayed and we ain't read the Word of God in a week and then we come in there on Sunday, oh, we're going to have revival, we're going to have service and we ain't read nothing. The only anointed in the house is when the pastor's up here preaching. Church, what if we all got ready? What if we all come together? What if we all had the expectancy that God's going to move? What if we come in here with the shout of praise? Not in the mully grubs, but both my hands lifted up. My head up high. Not in myself, but in Jesus Christ. Though none go with me, Lord, still I will follow you. You can take the whole world, but just give me Jesus. I'm not turning back. I'm not going back to that pig pen. The devil hates it. He can't stand this kind of preaching or this kind of scriptures. He hates it. He knows he's the loser, but he wants to make sure that you think you're the loser. Listen to me now. Don't give the devil any room in your heart. I heard a preacher say this many, many years ago. He said, if you give the devil an inch, he'll become your ruler. (laughs) 
Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You want to know how I know? Glad you asked. The Bible says it like this in the book of James chapter 4 verse number 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Next time, listen to me. Next time he comes around, instead of running to the door, just say, Father, can you take care of this for me? No, he can't take it. You getting it tonight? You getting something? Praise God. He can't stay. He has to go in Jesus' name. There's nothing He can do about it. Please hear me tonight and know we are the children of God. We're joint heirs with Christ. There is so much in store for a child of God that will walk in the victory of God. Now, I'm not saying it's a bed of roses when you get saved. I ain't saying that. But I'm saying with Him, though, it's worth it. It doesn't matter what trial. Brandon Powell, however many years you've been saved, it's been worth every trial. It's been worth every, every bad trial you've ever walked through, every sickness, every disease, every family member that's gone on to be with the Lord. You, you can look back and say, He was God on the mountain. He's God in the valley. He's God in the good time. He's God in the bad time. He's God always. You see, this is what God wants from us. He wants us to walk with the boldness of Jesus Christ like never before. Not in ourselves, but in Jesus' name. There's no other name like Jesus. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha, the Omega, and He's my King. I don't know about you, but He's my King. He's never lost a battle. Sometimes we may think He is, but He hasn't and never will. I'm going to praise Him for what He's already done, and I'm going to praise Him for what's coming down the road. There's a move of God that's coming. Are we going to be ready? Psalms 31, 24 says it like this. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. The Bible is constantly reminding us that God is for us. We can walk a victorious life. We can do what God's called us to do. Stop walking around like somebody just took your bowl of cookie dough ice cream. Some of you may say, well, I don't mean nothing to me, but there's some in here who loves some cookie dough ice cream. You ain't going to take it from them, I promise you. Be glad. Again, in the mighty strong name of Jesus, whenever you start getting down, think about what God's already done. Some of us, it may have not been saved long, it may not take too long. Well, God done this, 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 and this. Oh, but He's done so much more. There's so much that He's kept us from. So much that He's done for us that we don't even know anything about. Too many times we get down. Listen now. Too many times we get down and we'll call somebody that will get right down in that pit of despair with us. And they'll say, oh, that old devil's been on my back too, bless his sweet little name. I've had to fight him all day, that little sweetie. Her gloom, despair, sweet agony on me. Come on now, church. Let's not get like that. Somebody calls you in there in the pit of despair. Don't get down in there with them and start complaining about this or complaining about that. Say, honey, I'm here to help you up. Get up and let's go forward in the name of Jesus and let's do the will of God. It doesn't matter how bad your situation looks. It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what the doctor reports saying because greater is He that's in me than he that's in the world. He's the healer. He's the life giver. He's the life taker. Whatever He needs to do, He can. Church, it's time for us to be awakened out of the despair and set our eyes on Jesus. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. As I was writing this message, the Lord brought a message back to me that Dad preached. I believe it was last year. It could have been the year before on a Wednesday night. And it was talking about the eagle sitting on that ledge waiting on that warm air. You see, he's sitting there. He's waiting. He knows if he can wait for that warm air to hit him, it'll lift him up, get him up higher. 
And then he can use the little bit of energy he needs to use. He can get on above the storm. You see, so many times we don't wait on the Holy Ghost. We just jump out and start flapping. We're going to fly and do it all on our own. But I'm telling you, we need to wait on the Holy Ghost and say, Holy Ghost, I'm not moving. I'm not going anywhere until that warm wind, until the Holy Ghost comes up on the inside of me so I can get up a higher than the storm clouds and I can see clearly. The warm air pushes that eagle up higher in the sky. You see, the eagle doesn't have to use all his energy because he knows there's a wind that's coming. He knows that he will get the wind, will get him above the storm clouds. You see, once you get above the storm, then you can see clearly then. How many of us ever ridden in an airplane? Got a couple. How many remembers when you get up in the airplane, you get above the clouds, you can just see forever. It's like it never ends. Just clear skies. Same way with the eagle. He knows he can sail up above the clear skies because he waits on the wind. He's going to be ready for it. What about us? Are we going to wait? Oh, I'm not moving. God, I'm not moving. I want to move, but I'm not until you tell me to. I'm waiting on your Holy Ghost. I'm going to do exactly as you tell me to do. Are we willing? Are we ready? Are we going to wait on the Holy Ghost? Are we going to try and do it all on our own? How many knows that the church needs to get the Holy Ghost right back here behind the pulpit in the main service and quit pushing Him off to the corner because, oh, He may offend some people. Well, it's weird to hear somebody speak in tongues. You ever go to a football game and hear them crazy? That's weird. I mean, people say, oh, it scares me. The Holy Ghost scares me. But they watch zombies. They watch all kinds of things. They go to concerts where they take and bite the doves' heads off and tell me that that ain't weird. We've got to get the Holy Ghost front and center. Allow Him to move in our services. I want the Holy Ghost to have full reign in my life. He wants to come. He wants to move. He wants to set our feet on higher ground. He wants you to have the shout that God gave you. It's been too long for some of us. Some of us, it's just the shout's there. It's almost there. But then we allow the devil to talk us out of it again. It's time to push him aside and say, Shut your mouth, devil. Get behind me in the name of Jesus. And let the shout come forth. The shout of joy. Shouting about the goodness of God. Listen to me. I'm almost finished. He will never force you or He'll never force His way in a service. The Holy Ghost will never force Himself. If He's not wanted, He's going to go down the road. He's going to find a man or a woman and a church that says, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome here. You know, too many times the Holy Ghost knocks. Please let me come in. Please, uh, We'll let you come in, but you got to go here. No, He's not doing it. He's coming and He's going to be here. I wonder how many churches are missing out on the move of God that they do because they've ushered Him out. So we don't like it that way. It's too hard. This is too mean. It offends people. Honey, it's okay. That's the Word of God. It's going to offend people. But you know when the offenses come, we're going to move on in Jesus' name. They've ushered the Holy Ghost out. It's very dangerous grounds. You usher the Holy Spirit out, you lose your shout. The real shout. There's a copycat out there. There's a fake shout. There's one that you can pump and you can prime. Oh, but I want the Holy Ghost and fire. I want the real Holy Ghost and fire. I want Him to come in and I want Him to move. I want Him to do whatever He wants to do. I want people to be driving up and down the parkway and say, my God, why is my car pulling in here? What is it doing? I don't want to pull in here. But you know, the Holy Ghost convicts and they pull in here and they come in that back door. Just 15 minutes prior, they were thinking about killing themselves. But because the Holy Ghost brought them into the house, they sat under anointed singing and anointed preaching. They come and give their heart to God. And who knows, maybe they may be the next great evangelist. Because of the Holy Ghost. We can usher Him out. We want Him. We usher Him in every time. So tonight I close in with this. Psalm 34. Verse 3 through 4. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I'm asking you, please magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt His name together. I don't care if you like my hair or not. I don't care if you like Pastor Tony's hair or not. Lay all that aside 
Let's get the mind of God and let's say, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. We're going to magnify the Lord. We're going to exalt your name forever, God. And the Bible says that I sought the Lord and He heard me and He delivered me from all my fears. It doesn't say He delivered me from some of them, but it says He delivered me from all my fears. You got any rivers you think are uncrossable? You got any mountains you can't tunnel through? But guess what? My God specializes in things that are impossible. That river that you don't think you can cross, honey, hold on to the Master's hand because He just walks on the water and He'll just take you with you and you walk across the water too. It doesn't matter. Please hear me. It doesn't matter what people may say when we're in heaven for a split second. Everything we've ever gone against won't mean a hill of beans. Once we step in the side of those pearly gates on the streets of gold and I see Jesus, I say, I've made it home. It don't matter what the world said. It don't matter how they acted toward me. They may have hurt my feelings. Oh, well, I'm going to move. I'm going to serve Jesus and I'm going to walk. I'm going to allow the Holy Ghost to lead me every day. You would, let's stay. I think about that cloud of witnesses. Last May, I told y'all this, but last May, my granny went to be with Jesus. And just bear with me for a moment. I, I, I'm just speculating. Every now and then, I just wonder. She's over there looking down. And when I'm starting to feel down, she says, Billy, what are you doing? Get up, son. It don't matter what they said. It don't matter if the family turned their back on you. It don't matter if the job's this or the boss said that. It don't matter. Get up. Serve Jesus. I know it's worth it. I'm on the streets of gold dancing with Jesus. I'm in heaven tonight because of Jesus. I'm in heaven tonight. Stop allowing the devil to bombard your mind and be free tonight from the torment. God's here and He wants you to be free. The Bible says this, and I'm closing. John 8, 36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Without question, truly, undeniably, as a matter of fact, you are free indeed. How many knows your shout can cause those walls to fall? That's a different message. You will just bow our heads. Bow your head, eyes closed, please. Nobody looking around. 